Okay, so this is a demonstration of uh, the Dual Sport Maps Android app. Uh, I'll attempt to sort of narrate our way through all the basic functions of the software in hopes of uh, letting users know how it works. So the loading screen is here. You have a couple of options. You can pull up the map. Uh, you can look at the settings. You can look at the search functions or the favorites you've saved. Let's start with uh, the settings. Uh, the most important settings here uh, that you'll need to make sure you take care of is dealing with downloading vector maps. So, click here. You get a list of all the maps. Let's say you want maps of uh, California. You start typing, and here you go. Select one or two, click. I don't actually want to download them. And that's sort of how you do that. And you can go through all those settings. Uh, we'll touch on them as they become important here. Next, uh, let's look at the map. So this, uh, right now the app is set up with Google Maps as being the main uh, base map, but uh, we'll pull up the vector map first. Apparently we're in night mode, so we'll fix that. Okay. So here we are, blah, blah, blah. We can, uh, I've downloaded uh, Georgia and Florida. And uh, North Carolina. So we can uh, take a look at North Georgia here. Now these maps are rendered directly on the phone, which means you can operate the uh, app uh, in the absence of a telephone network. And in fact, how I operate it is uh, in airplane mode when I'm out on the bike. So uh, I would strongly urge you to do that as well. Um, it's less important if you have it plugged in, but if you're not plugged in, you'll run out of battery if you. Uh, don't have the radio shut off. Now, we'll go back to uh, the Google Maps because they're just a little faster. And uh, one of the main features the app offers is uh, the access to tracks on dualsportmaps.com. When you click the search button, uh, it gives you access to any of the tracks that are in the uh, vicinity of the screen. Alternate way to do that search is to click Menu, More, and then DSM Map Search, which is the exact same functionality as just tapping the search button. Most Android devices have a search button, but uh, not all of them. So when you do that, it brings up a list of all of the uh, maps that are there and downloads any new ones. And you can click on them to shut them off, as you can see. And we'll bring up uh, just, just these as an example. And you can see some waypoints in there, some photos. There's a photo. Photos only show when you have network access, but waypoints show all the time. Here's a waypoint. Uh, there's a little gate icon, and uh, the description is a road closed here. I, I rode down to the end of that road, and there's a big pile uh, and a sign that said, you know, road closed by National Forest Service, don't go here. That kind of deal. 
I made a little waypoint note and uh, moved on. Another feature this app offers is uh, perspective. So we can click here and all of a sudden it drops the map down and now you can see much farther ahead. So this is the mode I like when I'm rolling down the trail so I can actually uh, see ahead of me a good distance. When the mode's not on, uh, you see a lot less. Even at a given zoom, you can see that. And uh, if you click that button, it takes you to where you are uh, based on the GPS. The layers button will uh, allow you to select the map you want to see or weather radar for example, or traffic, points of interest, and your favorites. So we'll look at the weather radar. And it's just loading up right now. It loads up the weather radar in the vicinity of what's on the screen, and uh, when there's overlap of multiple radars, it puts them all on the screen. And uh, And so... Clearly here there was uh, there's some rain, which is great. I'll be there tomorrow. Nice and muddy. Oh, yeah. So there's quite a bit of rain. <laughs> and the Google traffic data. Both of these layers, um, the traffic and the weather, are only available when you're online, so not when you're offline. And you can see green is good and red is bad so that's pretty basic let's see here now I would not urge you to um, use this as a point-to-point a -point navigation tool but just so you know that you can you can say two point and you click another spot say Route from, and it will uh, draw a route and give you uh, directions on how to get to where you're going. And you can do that online or offline. Uh, if you do it offline as a no network access, then you have uh, a limitation on how far you can go before uh, the software just runs out of memory of figuring out everything. Let's see here. What else? Oh, you can click on a waypoint and say options and say just route to. And uh, that's going to take you from wherever you are to that waypoint. So in that case, it's taking me. Uh, 150 kilometers, pretty far. And that works great, but only if you um, are online, otherwise it won't work. There's just not enough uh, computing power on the phone to manage that, or I'm not clever enough to write software to do it anyway. So you're about, uh, I think, 20 miles or so uh, of on-device routing. Otherwise, you need internet access. Let's see. There are lots of cool map layers, like uh, one of my favorites is the USGS Topo layers. which are beautiful and informative especially when you're on the trail because things that don't show up on a on a Google map or on the vector maps will show up on these 